Dave Marcus may not have been NASCAR's flashiest or most famous, but he remains among the sport's most phlegmatic. His five wins don't rank highly on career charts, but his 35-year career does. The independent driver from Wisconsin stayed the course and raced from 1968 to 2002, retiring at age 62. But for Dave, his golden years never meant slowing down. In fact, he's still trying to go as fast as ever in this installment of Where Are They Now? Dave Marcus Racing. 71. Not the most famous number in NASCAR history, but one man drove it in five decades. Dave Marcus. Dave never enjoyed the same success of the NASCAR greats, but in the mid-70s, he matched them. Here comes Dave Marcus on a slingshot, and he gets a hold of Betty and goes by him. There's number 71, Marcus, the recent winner in Talladega, Alabama, in that 500-mile event. He's in front with his Dodge automobile. That's Dave Marcus, the K&K Dodge, Wausau, Wisconsin, farm kid. He's faster than anyone here today at 189 miles an hour. An independent driver from Wisconsin's Northwoods, Dave was always a bit of an outsider. But over the years, he became popular among his peers for hard work and racing in wingtip shoes. Well, back in the older days, we had a lot of problem burning our feet on the floorboards of the cars. The heels would burn right to the shoe, and, and, and we'd get a little burn in, on the heel. I can't remember what race it was, but the week before the North Wilkesboro race, we were standing around talking that morning, I think Richard Petty, David, and um, I said, you know, mine was sore but not burnt that bad, and then David Pearson said, he said, don't you have any shoes with leather soles? And I said, yeah, my dress shoes. I said, they're wingtips. He said, well, go get them and wear them today. Worn down, but not worn out. Those dress shoes have kept Dave moving. Today, he maintains his original shop in Asheville, North Carolina, and is still working as hard as when he first started. Boy, oh, boy. Well, I'm working on a 35-year behind honeydew list. I don't have that all caught up yet. <laughs> and, and I'm monkeying with old cars. A 1957 Jeep. Oh, looky here. That is Dave Marcus, who was running up front. What we need to do is get this as tight as we can. You can see Dave Marcus is up inside the car, actually doing some of the body work himself. I don't know, Greg. I guess you're going to have to get the saws all, maybe. Darrell Walter's crew has some help here. Dave Marcus, who was knocked out in the earlier accident. Couldn't get a ride. Dave Marcus kept telling car owners, this guy can get it done. I mean, it was a struggle for me all the time because it didn't have no major sponsorship. I had help from different people that messed with engines and things, but I just tinkered with a lot of it myself. We used a lot, a lot of used parts. I got a lot of parts from other teams. We just would look them over real good, magnaflux them, check them for cracks, and, and we'd reuse them. We cut a lot of corners, all, all we could. Are you going to be trying to purchase any of this equipment for yourself? Well, I've been trying to bid on a few things, yes. We had a slogan up there that says, uh, we have done so much with so little for so long that we can now do anything with nothing. One man who appreciated that blue collar style was Dale Earnhardt. Their lifelong friendship formed out of mutual respect. We were at Martinsville, Virginia, and uh, Dale kept leaning on me and hammering on me. I was running good, he was running good. Dale Earnhardt and Dave Marquez makes it up in turn one. And uh, I spun him out. I just got upset with him and, and I spun him out. And he wouldn't talk to me for about two months. And then uh, one day we're at the racetrack and he come walking up to me with that big grin from ear to ear like he always did. He grabbed me around the neck and jerked me over there. And he finally said, you know that deal at Martinsville? I said, yeah. He said, I had that coming. So he said, I'm sorry about that. And we just became the very, very best of friends after that. We hunted and fished together and 
He'd come by here and pick me up with the airplane, and we'd go hunting somewhere. And we were great friends, and uh, and I really, really miss him. I just, uh, there ain't hardly days go by that I don't think about him. In 2002, Dave retired at Daytona, one year after Dale's death. But you're just saying, go from this point right here. Well, that's what I think, back to here. A hard worker all his life, retirement doesn't register with Marcus. He's a practical mechanic with a touch of the eccentric. Though his racing career is behind him, he still yearns to go fast. He got the speed up to 217.619 miles per hour in a one-mile uh, timed course. Put a little pressure on it here. That's what I want. So uh, we're going to Wilmington, Ohio, and see if we can boost them numbers up and try and get up in that 220 bracket. I don't think he'll call that a belly pan. I, uh, I'm sure he won't. No one will ever fill those shoes or drive the 71 harder than the man in the Goodyear hat from Wisconsin. What I missed the most was competing in the event. I don't miss the work schedule we were on because it was getting pretty, pretty tough and I was tired most of the time. But I miss being at the track, seeing the guys running in that race. I still am competitive type person. I still would like to be racing, but uh, can't swing it, I guess. Retirement is something we all have to face. But at age 72, Dave never really got the message. Thank <laughs> you.